about parabolic mirrors. In astronomy, we learned that parabolic mirror is the shape that a mirror should be if you want to be observing a star or some outer space object, you want all of the light rays coming from that star to go through the focal point. So the image will be very crisp and sharp. So we learned that a parabola is the best shape for that. So a telescope mirror has to be carved in the shape of a perfect uh, parabola. This would uh, apply towards uh, optical telescopes, it would apply towards radio telescopes. So when you see a radio dish, it has a perfect shape of a parabola. It has to be that. So let's choose a, a parabola, for example. Parabolas can be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. But to make it simple now, let's just choose a parabola which has centered on the origin. So I'm just going to knock this out, let's say b and c is 0, and I'm going to choose a particular kind of parabola, let's call this um, uh, <coughs> uh, I'm going to choose a particular kind of parabola, let's call this y equals quarter x squared, okay? So if I can show that all parallel light rays coming and hitting this parabola go through the focal point, then we could generalize this to any kind of other parabola. So in, in math, we learned that the focal point of a parabola, particularly if it's centered at the origin, then the focal point is at a 1 over 4a. In other words, it'll be uh, 0 and 1 over 4a. So the a that I have chosen in this case is 1 fourth just to make it more simple. So if A is 1 fourth and the focal point is at 1 over 4A, that's going to be 0, 1 over 4 times 1 fourth. So it's going to be 0, 1. So the parabola is going to look like this. 0, it's going to start at the origin. And the focal point is going to be at 0, 1, right here. So we'll call this F. And then let's draw a rough diagram of what the parabola is going to look like. When x equals 1 and negative 1, y will be 1 fourth. So it looks something like this. When x equals 2 and 2, negative 2, it, uh, y equals 4, um, y equals 1 and negative 1. When x equals uh, 4, and negative 4. 4 squared over 4 is 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So more or less it looks something like uh, it opens up like this. Okay, and then opens up like this. And it's going to go like that. Okay. So let's first choose some random point and then uh, do the math on that. And let's show that a parallel light ray goes through the focal point. So let's choose this point here. <clears throat> let's choose this point here. Uh, two, uh, no, this one was the point four. So if x was four, then y was four. So it's the point four, four. So let's say you have a parallel light ray coming from the stars, so it's coming from very far off objects, and then let's see where it bounces, okay? So what we want to do here is we're going to use some calculus and some trig. Uh, we want to know what would be the slope of the tangent line here, so draw a tangent line. So what would be the slope of that? So if the equation is equal to y equals 1 fourth x squared, the derivative of it is equal to 1 half x. When x equals to 4, what's the derivative? Half of 4 is 2. So the slope of this is a 2. Okay. What would be the slope of the normal line at that point? So normal line would come in like this at that surface, what would be the slope of that? Well, in math, we learned that normal lines, their product of their slopes is a negative 1, right? So 2 times x equals, uh, 2 times some constant equals negative 1. 
That means x is negative 1 half. So the slope, let's put it m for symbol here, m. So the slope of the perpendicular line at that point is going to be negative half. Okay. Now, what can we gather from there? Uh, from there? Well, we also know from math that the, the tangent of the inclination angle of a line is equal to its slope. So, if you go back to the very definition of slope, slope is a rise over run. And let's say this is the inclination angle of a particular line, right? How much it's inclined. So, if we take the tangent of the inclination angle, we get rise over run, and that's also equal to slope. So if I want to know what angle a particular line is inclined at, whether it's negative or uh, positive, I take the tangent inverse of the slope, and that gives me the angle. So if I want to know the angle of the, uh, the, the perpendicular line, so I'm going to take theta is equal to tan inverse of negative half. So let's see what that gives us. Tan inverse of negative 0.5. That gives us negative 26.565 degrees. So what is that angle? Let me draw this so that it's not so steep. So it looks something like this. perpendicular to this line and then this angle that we got is this angle here if I draw the line here this is uh, 20 negative 26.565 degrees that's what that means so in other words this angle is also these are uh, opposite uh, angle vertical angles so this is also 26 degrees, so 26.565. The negative here doesn't really mean a whole a lot because all it means is it's below the horizontal. It's inclined downward. So let's just write the absolute value of that. Okay, so what can we, where, where do we go from there? Well, from here what we can argue is that from physics we know that when an object reflects off a surface, the angle of re uh, reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. So this is known as the law of reflection. So when you have a certain surface, an object comes, a light ray comes, reflects, this angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Okay. So we already have the normal line. So when the parallel ray comes, it's going to bounce back this way. Okay. At an angle equal to what it came. So this angle and this angle must be the same. Okay? So what is this angle right here? Well, since this is a 90 degree because you have a parallel ray, a vertical ray coming down, right? This is 90 degrees. That means this angle here is 90 minus 26.565. So 63.435, 63.435, that means this angle is also 63.435. Okay, now where does that leave us? How about this little piece down here? We know this, this whole thing is 63 and this whole thing is 63. We know this thing is 26. So this little piece, uh, this little piece here, okay? So let's write that in red. This little piece here, okay? What is that equal to? Let's call that theta. What is that equal to? Well, it's 63.435 minus 26.565, okay? Minus 26.565, that's gonna give us 36.8699, let's just write that out, 
Okay, now that we know that the angle of that, we can imagine that to be a certain line. Okay, imagine this to be a certain line. 